JavaScript is so cool. I just created a button and when I click on it, it says, hello world. Sally just introduced me to CSS and it is amazing. I turned my button into a rainbow. I'm pretty sure I'm the best developer there ever was. I created a to-do list application and a weather app and I only had to follow six tutorials to get it done. I think I'm gonna create Facebook next. Ugh, I have been spending a month trying to build this auth system and it's just not working. And now this web dev simplified guy is trying to tell me I need to learn React. And next, I can't even learn JavaScript. Why is everybody so much better than me at programming? I can't build any projects. I can't learn anything. I'm just, I'm done, I quit. That right there is pretty much the most common path people go through when they're learning to program. They get really excited at the beginning and they start to feel super powerful because they're building so many things. And then they start to hit what I like to call the hump where they're just not able to get over that next step and they feel like they're constantly stuck. There's so much to learn and they're behind everyone. And a lot of people get to this point and they completely give up. They either give up on programming entirely or they give up on the project that they're building. And in this video, I wanna teach you how you can get over that hump whether it's building a project, learning to program, or even something unrelated to coding entirely, this video is gonna give you tips and tricks that'll help you get over that hump and make sure that you're actually a successful developer that doesn't quit at all. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And by far the most common advice you're gonna get for how to get over a hump for anything is just practice more, try harder, do more, try more. And that's obviously going to work. If you just put in 10 times the effort, eventually you're gonna get over the hump. But this isn't really the best advice because if you're struggling to get over that hump, you're probably pretty discouraged. and You just don't feel like going on because you feel like it's hopeless or worthless and you're not making any progress. So just trying harder at the same thing that you're struggling with isn't always the best solution. Yes, if you put in the time and effort, you probably will get over that hump, but putting in that time and effort is difficult and is what leads to most people quitting. So instead, the first piece of advice I wanna give you actually may sound counterintuitive, but is to try something different, but related. So let's say that you're stuck trying to build a particular project. Maybe in the example I gave at the beginning of the video, you're trying to implement an auth system. It's just not working and you're really struggling with it. One thing that you can try doing is on the exact same project, work on something else. If your project's big enough, there's probably three or four different sections you can work on at the same time. So switch from working on the auth section to working on maybe something else that you can do on the meantime, it's like maybe an email system or something like that, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but something in the same project, but that's slightly different than the thing you're currently working on. This gives you a fresh thing to look at, which will help reinvigorate you, make you more motivated because it's something new and fresh. But this isn't always a great solution because maybe you're just tired of the project in general, or maybe your project isn't big enough to try something new in the same project. So in that vein, just create a brand new project about something else that interests you. It's okay to just quit a project that you're really struggling with and go on to something else, even if it means you never get back to that original project. Because the important thing is you want to continue to be programming and learning. And if starting a new project gets you doing that, that's the most important thing. Now, ideally, the goal of this new project is not to quit your old project entirely. It's just to reinvigorate your mind and to help you learn in different ways. So now on this new project, maybe make it something smaller and obtainable that you can do in a couple of days, maybe a week or a month, depending on how long you want to spend. And then once you finish that new project, go back to the old project and hopefully at this point you have more skills, more knowledge, and you're more passionate and more motivated than you were before. So you can hopefully get over the hump that you were stuck at before. Maybe you're gonna go back to that old project and realize when you get to it, wow, this is so easy with all the stuff that I've learned before. One of the things that I always tell students in my courses, if they get stuck building a particular project, I say just stop. Don't worry about continuing on it. If you're really stuck on it and you're struggling with it, just skip it, build a few more projects later on in the course, and then come back a week or a month later and rebuild that original project. And you're gonna notice when you go back to that old project, it's gonna seem so much easier than it was at the time. And maybe you're just over your head and past your skill level trying to build that project. So jumping ahead, doing some other projects and then coming back is the best way to solve that problem. And it really makes you feel super strong and powerful because you look at that project that really intimidated you before, and now it's an absolute breeze. This also works for non-projects as well. Let's say you're really struggling with learning specific concepts inside of JavaScript. Well, one thing you can do is try to learn other concepts in JavaScript. So if you're really stuck on promises and it's just not making sense to you, instead of continuing to try to bash your head against it continually, trying to learn it even though it's not working, you know, just go ahead and learn something else in JavaScript. It doesn't matter what it is, just learn something else that's more exciting, more interesting, and maybe more at your current skill level. That's going to reinvigorate you and make you more motivated. And then a week, 
two weeks, a month later, come back and look at promises again. And maybe at this point, your skill level has improved, your understanding of the language is better, and you're gonna look at promises and boom, it's just gonna click for you out of nowhere. And even if when you come back to it, it doesn't click, it'll probably be easier. And even if it's not, you'll hopefully refresh your motivation. So now you're 100% motivated to look into it while before you were super demotivated. And kind of similar to the project, if you're really just demotivated and bummed out on JavaScript in particular, go ahead and try to learn something entirely different. Learn a brand new programming language instead of focusing on JavaScript. You may think the skills aren't transferable, but really learning any programming language helps you with all programming languages. So go ahead and learn Rust or PHP or C, it really doesn't matter. Just find a language that you think is interesting and spend some time trying to learn that language. After you're done doing that and you kind of, you know, like I learned enough about this language, I feel really good about it, come back to whatever you're struggling with in JavaScript or whatever it is, and now you dive into it with a new technology in mind, you have new thoughts in your brain, you have new knowledge, and maybe this new concept is gonna be much easier to learn. Same thing, you could go learn some more CSS, take like a month break doing CSS, come back to JavaScript, and you have a new set of eyes to help you actually parse this problem. Now, the next two points I want to talk about are both somewhat related because they deal with looking up information online. And the first one I want to talk about is that you don't know what you don't know. And essentially, all I'm saying by this is that you can't know something if you don't know what to look for in the first place. For example, how do you know what to learn in JavaScript if you don't know anything at all about JavaScript? This is why I think it's really important that if you're learning anything at all, whether it's JavaScript, CSS, learning an instrument, doesn't matter what it is, try to look up tutorials, guides, roadmaps, different things that can try to help guide you in the correct path to learning this particular skill. This is why I think courses or roadmaps are a really great way to actually learn a particular skill, because not only are you getting the information you need, but more importantly, you're getting a roadmap that's making sure that you're learning exactly what you need to learn in the correct order. If you want a completely free roadmap that covers everything you need to learn about web development, I have a full front end, back end, and full stack web dev guide roadmap that you can get in the description. It's completely free. I'll link it down there for you. And if you want more of a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually learn particular technologies, I have courses on CSS, React, JavaScript, Next, TypeScript, and so on. I'll link all of my courses in the description down below for you so you can pick and choose the ones that actually work for your particular place and where your learning's at. This path of actually using these tools for learning though can actually be a quite slippery slope if you dive too deep. If you only stick with like roadmaps and courses and a couple videos here and there to learn particular topics, you're probably doing great. But if you start going down the rabbit hole of just watching video after video after video on YouTube, different tutorials, opinion pieces, and things like that, you're going to get sucked into a rabbit hole of too much information. So on one end, you have too little information and you don't know what you don't know. But when you get too much information, you become overwhelmed. So my third tip is to actually back off and spend less time consuming content. If you find yourself watching tutorial after tutorial after tutorial and educational video and opinionated videos all the time, and you're not actually spending time building projects and using these skills in your own actual code, you're probably consuming too much content and not actually implementing things enough. The key to getting better is to practice. And the only way to practice is to actually sit down and write code. So if you wanna make sure you get better at writing code, you don't need to watch people doing tutorials on how to code, you need to sit down and actually write code yourself. It's fine to watch tutorials when you get stuck or to look up certain concepts you're unsure of, but if you're just finding yourself watching tutorial after tutorial after tutorial, like hours a day, you're most likely watching too much and not actually implementing the skills that you're supposed to be learning. This is probably the most demoralizing thing because you may think I'm spending three, four hours a day on programming, but in reality, you're spending three hours watching videos and only 30 minutes coding. So you're spending a ton of time, but you're really only getting a small amount of practice each day. So your progress is quite slow. And at the same time, the things that you know that you don't know, for example, you're learning all these things, but you don't truly know them, that is becoming larger and larger. So your skills are staying small while the things that you think you need to know is growing, which really demotivates you because you feel like you should know all these things because you've heard about them, but you haven't spent the time to actually learn them. So really try to balance the amount of content you consume to make sure that it's enough that you're actually learning new things and keeping pace with what you want to learn, but not too much where you're overwhelming yourself and you're essentially cutting away the time you should be spending practicing. Now, the final tip that I have is by far the most important, and that is to realize that learning to program, building a project, those are incredibly difficult, slow, and time-consuming things that take a lot of time to make progress in. You may see posts on Twitter and YouTube that seems like people are really fast and they're learning this thing in like one month and getting a job immediately as a programmer, 
but this is not realistic. In those particular situations, they maybe had prior learning experience, they had more time to dedicate than you, or maybe they're just straight up lying to you about this. It's very obvious that it's the internet, not everything is true. So really just realize it's a slow process and it doesn't matter how long it takes you as long as you actually get to that finish line. Taking a year, two, three years to learn programming is completely normal and that's how most people spend their time learning to program. So when you're looking at other people on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, wherever it is, and you're seeing that their skill level is maybe higher than yours, just realize they probably put in years or even decades to get to the point where they are. And eventually, if you put in that same level of work and effort, you will be where they are or even beyond where they are. It's just important to know that it's a slow process and it's okay to take time getting there. It's not a race. The important thing is that you get to the finish line. Because if you go too fast and burn out and quit, you never actually made it to the finish line. So you failed while the person that took twice as long as you, they made it to the finish line and actually succeeded and are working as a full-time web developer. So if you're really ready to get over the hump, I highly recommend downloading my completely free web dev roadmap. It's linked down in the description below or checking out any of my courses. Again, I'll link all of them in the description down below. They cover everything that you need to learn as a web developer. So it doesn't matter where you are on your learning journey, at least one of my courses or the web dev roadmap are going to be really helpful for you. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.